The next few steps are the same for no matter which character you're doing. So um, the what I'm talking about is the actual construction process. The, the making of the body is exactly the same no matter which character you're doing. But um, some of the body pieces, as I mentioned earlier, are different shapes or different colours, but the methods um, for all three are the same. So what I've done is I've filmed um, the, the steps, probably the next three or four steps, using Cindermouse um, because it is a lot easier to see what I'm doing on the cream felt. But you will just need to bear in mind that whenever I mention something about cream felt specifically, um, or a body colour that, or or any any element of her body that is specific to her, that you will just need to um, use the relevant colour for your own character. So, for example, um, with this tail, in the video you will see that she's got a little um, cream coloured scrap at the end of her tail, and that is so that it blends in with the back of her body so that you don't see through. Um, felt's very thick so you don't need to worry too much anyway but um, whereas for Mouse Charming for example he would have this dark brown scrap to match his body colour. The same with thread colours. Whichever body piece you are, do, whichever character you're doing you choose the thread colour to match your body piece. If in doubt it's all written down on your instructions and on the templates as well um, so you can't go far wrong but just bear in mind if I say cream that's not necessarily the colour for your character. Um, at most points I think I've remembered to tell you that throughout these videos but just in case I haven't just be mindful of it. Um, just so you know the tails for all characters are all peach also, the ears and noses are all peach, so the eyes you the eyes are the same, the faces are made exactly the same. Um, the only difference really is the body colour and the thread used to stitch the body. Um, and so let's get making this tail. For this you need the remaining pipe cleaner, a needle. Um, if you're working with the kit, uh, just a reminder to um, be very careful when you get the needle out of the bag that you don't lose the eyes and all the little bits and pieces. Um, you'll need craft scissors, embroidery scissors, your hemostat, some craft glue, embroidery thread, the peach colour, DMC 945, and some of your leftover uh, cream felt. Just a um, reasonable sized scrap we'll need so I've just got all the remaining stuff that we had. Um, to start off with we begin very much like um, the limbs that we've just prepared. So the first job you need to do is cut this pipe cleaner to roughly or cut a roughly 20 centimetre length from it. Um, so 20 centimetres is a about, let me remind myself, uh, eight inches roughly. Um, the easiest way to do that is, I don't bother measuring it properly, you can if you want, but um, take one of the pattern sheets and the short side is about 21 centimeters or eight and a half inches if you're writing on, if you're printing onto a US letter paper from the PDF pattern. Um, so you just need to cut it slightly shorter, shorter than that side. Again, it doesn't need to be perfect. Um, just put the extra bit away for a while. And then we're going to do exactly like we did before. We're going to kind of uh, shave some of the um, fluff off. Well, we're going to actually do all of the fluff this time. So um, start at one end. When I say all of the fluff, you will leave a little on because um, you can never get rid of all of it but it's basically the more you can get off the better. Um, the reason we still have a peach or a beige colour pipe cleaner is that um, when you're wrapping it with thread it doesn't matter then if you miss a couple of bits or um, or your thread isn't wrapped as neatly as it might be um, because the bits that poke through are a similar colour to the thread so you won't notice them. Um, I don't go all the way up to the top because you take your fingers off if you do, so I go almost to the top um, 
and clear all of that so I do it in about four sections. Normally I do it neater than this but of course now because I'm filming it it's not going anywhere near as neatly. Again you're kind of running your blades up against that wire. You can curve the wire around to the left or to the right if you're left handed to just make sure it's out of the path of those scissors and just work your way around clearing all the fluff. Try not to sneeze at this point because this fluff can get everywhere if you're not careful. And then, oh, I've got some stragglers up here as well. And then flip it over and do the remaining bit, just to save your fingers. The sharper your embroidery scissors are, the easier this fluff will come away. Um, my embroidery scissors are not the sharpest in the world because I, they get an awful lot of use. But they do the job. Okay, so you um, have one kind of almost stripped pipe cleaner, just put all the fluff in the bin um, and as you can see there is still some fluff left on there that's why you want the colour to match as well as as well as it can. Once you um, have stripped your fluff off your pipe cleaner the next thing you need to do is take your peach thread um, if you're using the kit it will come in a whole skein so just take off the bands um, and unravel it a little bit. You don't want to cut anything off um, because you'll be using one continuous length so but just un unravel some um, and then you want to put a little bit of glue onto the end of your pipe cleaner. This is that's a bit much glue but um, that is just to stop the end from unravelling when you start to wind it. So take the end of your uh, thread, peach thread, and then put your um, thread kind of facing the inside of the pipe cleaner and just start to wind it round a little bit. You want to use less glue than I did then, that was too much glue. Um, once you've got to the end, start winding back and once you've got a few, a little way of the way along, then you can start, instead of um, wrapping it like you did um, to start with, the quickest way to go about this is to hold one end in your with your thumb and forefinger, tension the thread a bit like you would if you were knitting or crocheting around your left hand, or right if you're left-handed, and uh, roll, just roll, twiddle with your fingers the wire to wrap the thread automatically around as it rolls. Just see if you can, it's not very easy to show you on the camera. Just gradually moving along as you go. Don't worry if you've got some gaps, this is just the first bit really, so you'll cover all this up later anyway. The reason we're doing this is to get, um, when we get to the middle, so we're probably, you want to go just past the middle really, which I think we are now, and you're going to fold the pipe cleaner in half, and press the end together to form one tail kind of length 
and then you're going to wrap the thread around both pieces of the pipe cleaner so it's going to be going around two and the reason we folded it in half and went over that first bit is because you want this end of the tail to be completely covered in thread. Um, I'm going to dab a little bit of glue, tiny bit, on the end there just to hold the end of the thread. If you um, hadn't wrapped that over to begin with um, you would see the wire at the end there so that's why we've wrapped um, wrapped that halfway. Now I'm just going to continue wrapping and twisting the two wires with my right hand and letting holding the thread in place so that it wraps around them as they twist. Um, and I'm going to go back over both of the wires all the way along. Um, if you get some knobbly bits don't worry um, it looks quite cute and more mousy if you think of an actual mouse. Um, often they'll have had maybe some damage to their tail and they'll have little humps in it, um, things like that, so it looks more um, realistic. You'll also notice that the two wires can tend to twist as you're wrapping them. Um, again, don't worry about that. It looks more organic. I personally think it looks quite nice, um, but you can untwist it once you get to the end of the tail and I will show you how to do that. So I'm just going to unravel a bit more thread. I hope you can see. It's difficult, I've had to close the blinds because there was so much light streaming in that I couldn't see what I was doing. Let me just wrap that up a bit. I'm going to switch sides because I find it easier to twist from this direction. As you go along you'll get into a bit of a rhythm and it gets a bit faster. dodgy bit there. Um, once you get to about here actually, once you get probably a centimetre um, or half an inch from the end, splay out the two uh, prongs of the wire into a V shape and just continue up wrapping around the one that hasn't yet been wrapped. Take a little bit of glue to this end. Snip off the thread and just wrap it over the glue to hold it in place. This end bit doesn't have to be neat because it's going to be hidden inside the body. So I'm going to snip that off use a smidgen more glue just to stick that down so it doesn't all come undone and remember when I said that you get some kind of twisting you can untwist it now if you want to you can leave it twisted or you can untwist it and that's your basic mouse tail um, what we are going to do just to secure it, to make sure um, that it doesn't pull out of your mouse once um, when your mouse is hanging, just to make it a bit more secure, we're going to stick this to another bit of, um, of scrap fabric. So what I do is I take kind of a, a V shape and just snip around it. Let me just snip this off. Again, doesn't have to be neat, you'll neaten it up afterwards. And you want to place it so the V, the base of the V is roughly in the middle of this piece of fabric. What I'm going to do is take my needle and make a hole at that base of the V. Kind of 
wiggle the needle around in the um, fabric a bit and then get your embroidery scissors and open them up carefully don't cut your fingers obviously and poke one of the sharp ends through the felt and then just kind of again wiggle that around just to make the hole a bit bigger basically um, you can use a hole punch if you've got a teeny tiny one but I prefer to use the scissors because you want this tail I'm just going to cut off some of that excess fluff that we've made you want the tail to be a really tight fit through this hole so it's better for it to be a little bit small and you have to force the tail through than for it to be too big because the tail will flap around so the first thing you're going to do is poke the tip of the tail through this hole and it will be a tight tight fit so you'll have to squish it like this and then we're going to bend these this V shape up against this felt and we're just going to secure it with a few stitches to this felt so cut it doesn't have to be precise maybe a bit as long as your arm separate out one strand so you the, the thread's made of six strands you just want one of them for this job so you pull out one hold the others with your thumb and forefinger and pull the single strand out of the top then fold it in half put the two ends the two loose ends through the eye of your needle I'm just going to wet them a bit to make it easier to thread and then we are going to sew this V shape to the felt so you can come up anywhere I normally start at one end and go down the other so come up from the back leave that little loop I don't know if you can see that loop there leave that don't pull that all the way through go over the wire and put your needle through that loop pull it tight and it will just hold it without a knot and then you're just gonna tack the wire to the felt all along the length of that V it doesn't have to be neat again this is going to be inside the body of your mouse so nobody will be able to see it And come all down the other side once you are happy that you've secured um, the wire to the felt then you can just uh, secure the end of the thread with a couple of back stitches so I would Turn, turn the felt over, run the needle underneath for once, go back and make the exact same stitch again, pull the th thread through and then make it a third time but this time before you pull the thread all the way through put the needle through that loop once, twice and pull it tight and that will be a knot. Snip off the end and then all that remains is just to neaten this piece of felt up so I'm going to cut it so that it's got maybe half a centimeter, quarter of an inch um, outside of the wires and just curve these edges so it's kind of a rounded triangle shape um, the reason you want it to do that you don't want too much bulk to be flapping around inside the mouse um, but this is just going to be an extra piece of uh, leverage to stop this tail pulling through the little hole of the mouse um, so that's going to be his bottom and that will just sit inside so you'll make a hole in the back body of the mouse and this bit, will, the tail will poke through and then that will sit inside the back um, and that's your tail <laughs>